welcome to Kate's Egg. Today is a very exciting day because my dad and I are moving combines out to the field to see if the wheat is ready. So I'm putting it in third gear. Let's see. There we go. Now it's in third and I should be ready to go. Put my header up a little bit. Gosh, this is the first time I've been, I've been in the combine in a year. And when it's in third gear, they get really turny to say the least. You have to be very careful. We are going to test the wheat and what we are looking for is how high the moisture is. That means is the wheat too green and not ripe enough to harvest. If so, we may have to wait a week or a couple of days because we can only put so damp of wheat in the bins. We do have some bins with fans on them, but ideally we want to cut the wheat at about a 12 moisture because not all of our grain bins have fans. Seeing if my combine's going to make this turn here. It's always a bit different hopping in the combine for the first time. Last year I did not rode the combines out to the field, so I just got to start at a slow speed in the field. I'm going about 10 miles an hour right now. I'll go a little bit faster. But you want to be careful, especially when it's your first time back in the combine. And you don't want to steer too much. As soon as you start steering too much, the combine gets out of your control. But every time you steer, you have to turn back. So if I want to go this way, I have to turn that way and then turn back. Now I'm going a little bit faster, 15, which is too fast right now, actually. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit. It just doesn't seem like a comfortable speed. And my header is bouncing a little bit. When your header bounces, you definitely want to slow down. It's nice to have seats with air in them so that your whole console here goes up and down with you. The wheat looks ready, but we can look ready and still be too moist. So we're just going to check that out now. Combines are fairly easy to road. And road is what you call it when you just drive them to, from one field to another in third gear. Um, when you're not just in the field, they're fairly easy to road when they have pickup headers. And those are about 15, 16 feet long and they pick up wheat that's been swathed by a swather and put in windrows. The headers that are more challenging are the 35 foot 40 headers and last year I ran a 35 foot header. This year I'm running a 40 foot header so you really have to weave in and out of signs and power poles and everything. It's quite a challenge. So now I'm full throttle and I'm going 20.8 miles per hour which I would probably be more comfortable with if I had done this a couple of times. And I've done it many, many times, but just not this year. Okay, yeah, I'm going to slow down a little bit. It just, it takes slowing down to like 19.9 versus 20.8. Even though that's one mile per hour, it makes a lot of difference. It just kind of takes the scary edge off of things. These are definitely not pieces of machinery you want to hurt by any means. What's so cool to watch is you have rust on your header when you start this harvest season and then by the end it's super shiny and beautiful looking because the wheat polishes it. My dad's just in front of me so he'll be showing me the field we're going to go to. And you always rev it up before putting it in third gear or traveling at a fast pace just because combines run better when they're revved up rather than when they're in their low idle kind of speed. I almost hit that sign there, which is not good because my header is very short, so I would really have no excuse for that. You don't have an excuse for it even if you do have a 40 foot header because you're supposed to be paying attention. I'm not sure if you can see, but in the middle of this field over there, there's a homestead, which is kind of interesting. There used to be a lot of homesteads in the area. My grandfather showed me at the homestead map and it's unbelievable to see the amount of farmers there and so amazing to look back on those homestead plots and see some of your neighbor's names and your own name and your own farm where it started. Um, most of those farms are not in existence anymore, but it's neat to see the ones that have been able to keep going. We're coming up pretty soon to a stop sign and then we'll be on the highway. Harvest season is the time of year when you see all of the combines and big tractors on the road. 
I love it. I wave at everyone just because I think it makes their day a little bit brighter and it makes my day brighter as well. So it looks like we're headed out east first. So this will be a little bit of a ways. I enjoy traveling on the highway a lot better than gravel roads just because it's less bumpy. Oh no wonder I'm chilly. My AC is on full level of cold. There we go. You always have to keep the air conditioner running in the combine just because everything will work better um, and you want to keep your air conditioner working so you just change the temperature. That's something Darcy taught me and he's one of our employees on our farm. He's been with us since before I was born. I'm definitely not driving completely straight so my dad's probably looking in his mirror and going, gosh, Kate, you can't drive. My max speed is 21.4 to 5 miles an hour. You wouldn't think so, but a tenth of a mile an hour makes a huge difference in a combine. Now we're going by our neighbor's house and farm, who's my dad's very good friend from school, and he was in my crop update video, so I'll slow down a little bit because I'm about to go over a bridge. Ah, uh, 9600 combine, I've never driven one of those, but I do miss my 9610. If you haven't watched already, you should watch the video and it's titled My Dad Sold My Combine from last year because I always used to drive the 9610 at Harvest. We pretty much grew up together. Um, it's been around since I was born and I was so absolutely distraught when my dad sold it before last Harvest. I've been driving this ever since and it's just not the same. Although it's so nice to watch it pick up wheat because it has a belt header. Um, rather than an auger and the wheat goes through a lot smoother, but it's just not the same. My dad's going not full speed, so I had to slow down a little bit to give him some room. I just got a lighting system air and I had gotten another air too, so I just pressed the check mark. There's so much technology in these newer combines that there's always sensors and little things that are having problems. So as long as it's not the major things, you don't have to worry about it because you could spend weeks trying to figure out which sensor went out and what's making this code. My cylinder looks like it's set at three. So now we're going on to a different road. Oh, I started way too fast. I need to slow it down. I get a little ambitious when I'm roading the combine, clearly. I've never had any accidents or incidents when roading combines. I usually know when to slow down before it goes completely overboard. And now that I'm straight, I can go my full speed, but I just hadn't fully made the corner before I added on the power. That was not a good plan, I suddenly realized. And then this field looks absolutely beautiful. Um, the golden wheat is spectacular for harvest time and really makes everything look amazing. Your amber waves of grain but this is so thin and also the kernels in the head on the wheat which is what we're harvesting much smaller than it normally is i'm catching up to my dad again so i'm slowing down now i'm slowing down because i'm coming on around this slight turn in the road it's kind of more of a corner than a turn you almost need to slow down after your corn corners just to get a little more centered and then you can speed up and you're good hit some potholes, lighting system, and my header started bouncing. So I may not actually be able to go full speed on this road. This is a fairly wide road to road on, so it's much nicer than roading on something different, I guess. Now dad has put his blinker on, so I will too. Just my blinker is right to the left of my steering wheel looks like barley crop to my uh, to my right and not a very good one at that it looks like this is the field do you have a coffee dad do you have a coffee maybe he doesn't have a radio so i'll idle it down i'll put my parking brake in actually so anyway uh, i'm gonna peel this right here kate then i want you to bring in and either park in the green spot. I'm gonna peel it down to the corner, come back up, peel this, the third, just to, uh, but I want you 
As soon as I peel this first one, pull in here and park and then come with me so you can look at the numbers I got set on my combine. Oh, pull in there and park, get in your combine. Right, so you can see what I'm doing. All right. What numbers I want on the combine, okay? And why. That sounds good. Okay. Does doing that tell you moisture? No, I got a moisture meter in mine and yours isn't working. That's why I want to use mine. So I don't want to peel a bunch of weed or get a bunch of wet weed in your combine, you know? That makes sense. I'm pretty excited harvest is starting. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned a little bit more about how your food gets to your table and all of the hard work farmers put in to be able to get it there. Make sure to like and subscribe. You can also follow Kate Tag on Instagram, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G, and on Facebook, Pinterest, and TikTok. Or you can visit the Kate Tag website, K-A-T-E-S-A-G dot com, and purchase a Kate Tag tote bag. They're up, made of 100% cotton and in the U.S., which is amazing. And the picture of wheat is actually a picture I took on our Montana farm of winter wheat during harvest time. And the combine I drew as well. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.